will the movie teased in 22 Jump Street credits have to suffice for viewers, or will 23 Jump Street actually ever come to pass? Since the release of 22 Jump Street, nearly 10 years have passed, and no conventional big screen comedy sequel has managed to outperform its domestic box office earnings. While some films have come close, none have been able to surpass 22 Jump Street's $191 million North American total. This achievement indicates that the box office renaissance for R-rated comedies, which started in 2009 with The Hangover, came to an end with 22 Jump Street. Additionally, it shows how well-liked the two Jump Street movies were. Given its popularity, it wouldn't have been unexpected if we were already working on a parody of the Jump Street sequel legacy. There have not yet been any additional Jump Street sequels, and it doesn't seem like that will change anytime soon. Why did this occur? Why is it so difficult to find 23 Jump Street or any other installment of this franchise? Original plans for 23 Jump Street It's not surprising that such a project was on the minds of the creators of the first two entries in the franchise, given that 23 Jump Street was mockingly teased in a sight gag during 22 Jump Street and was explicitly depicted in the hilarious end credits of that same movie. The fact that Sony, Columbia Pictures needed franchises around 2014 didn't help either. The Spider-Man franchise was in shambles. Sony Pictures Animation was still having trouble releasing movies on a regular basis, and the company's long-standing partnership with comedian Adam Sandler was coming to an end. The Jump Street series appeared ready to deliver such lucrative features, which this studio needed from dependable hits. Rodney Rothman was commissioned to write a draft for 23 Jump Street in September 2014, three months after 22 Jump Street became one of the year's most popular films. Although Sony, Columbia obviously wanted the original Jump Street directors, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, to return, no release date was set at the time. Although this wasn't unexpected, the final course this follow-up would take was. The following Jump Street movie would be a crossover with fellow Sony property, Men in Black. It was revealed in December of that year as one of the many things made public as part of the Sony hack. When one takes into account how such a project could skewer cinematic universes, like how 21 Jump Street made fun of movie adaptations of TV shows and high school movies, while 22 Jump Street had a ton of meta jokes about sequels, the initially puzzling plan makes some sense. In the meantime, incorporating the Men in Black universe would be a surefire way to make this episode feel distinct from the ones that came before it. This franchise's bold move to introduce a sci-fi spectacle was successful. However, wasn't making a 21 Jump Street movie a risky move in the first place? Initial difficulties in 23 Jump Street Jump Street appeared to be in high gear as 2015 got underway, with news that another spin-off starring female characters was also in the works alongside the MIB 23 project. However, this was also the year that Lord and Miller's hectic schedule started to become a significant barrier for any future Jump Street projects. The two had openly discussed handing the next film's direction off to a fresh director while still wanting to be creatively involved in the writing and production of additional Jump Street stories. The most intriguing aspect of the duo's proposed sequel, which was made public the same year, was that all of the spin-offs shown in 22 Jump Street's credits would be accepted as canon. Lord and Miller wouldn't have much time in the near future for this franchise, despite their imaginative plan for where to take the story in a subsequent Jump Street installment. In order to make their debut as directors of high-budget live-action blockbusters in 2015, Lord and Miller first toyed with the idea of helming The Flash before deciding to take on Solo, a Star Wars story. The original creative voices of the Jump Street films would, at best, have a strained presence in whatever came next because these projects would take up a lot of time. Despite that development, MIB 23's production nevertheless picked up steam when James Bobin was hired to helm the movie in early 2016. By year's end, however, a new issue had arisen as a result of Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum's and the saga's leading men's respective career trajectories. As for dominating leading man roles in the movies for the previous 10 years, both men were about to take extended breaks from them. Following the release of War Dogs in 2016, Hill turned away from comedies and concentrated on his mid-90s directional debut as well as sporadic small parts in indie movies like The Beach Bum. Tatum, on the other hand, acted in Kingsman, The Golden Circle and Logan Lucky in 2017, after which he stopped appearing in significant live-action roles until Dog in 2022. Tatum wished to tone down his Hollywood presence and devote more time to being a father, while Hill wished to concentrate solely on other artistic endeavors. Because of their divergent goals, Tatum and Hill were never going to be the stars of a classic comedy like MIB 23. Moving on from Jump Street Sony, Columbia Pictures unexpectedly revealed at the end of 2017 that the Men in Black franchise would be returning in the summer of 2019 with Men in Black International. 
This move may have been made in response to MIB-23's apparent stagnation. It was made sure that MIB-23 was even less of a priority because this was a completely unique and fresh creative endeavor. Early in 2019, Phil Lord provided an update on the franchise's future by confirming that, in addition to additional Jump Street films being planned, the next film would now be called 24 Jump Street. Even though there was no information available about the creative team that would be working on this proposed feature, this unexpected development suggested that there was still hope for additional Jump Street movies. The significance of the Jump Street films for Tatum and Hill had not simply diminished by the end of the 2010s. It was also less of a massive necessity for Sony Columbia Pictures. The Jump Street movies weren't a top priority for this organization, despite the studio's obvious desire to have as many profitable ongoing franchises as possible. This was partially due to the fact that Sony Columbia Pictures has scaled back the number of comedies they produce annually, if they produce any at all. This is true of all major American film studios in the late 2010s, with the exception of Universal Pictures. R-rated comedies like the first 21 Jump Street are now an outlier in Sony Columbia Pictures' current annual goals. The fact that Sony must split the profits and ownership of these films doesn't help. In a time when the two studios frequently collaborated, Sony, Columbia, and MGM co-financed the original 21 Jump Street. In addition, Sony Columbia added production company Original Film to help cover the cost of both Jump Street films, with the addition of financier media rights capital for 22 Jump Street. However, contemporary blockbusters and sequels like Jumanji, The Next Level, or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood typically only have one other co-financier in the mix that will unavoidably eat some of the box office profits. Nearly 10 years later, Sony Columbia Pictures isn't opposed to co-financing projects. Sony Columbia Pictures' ability to profit from MIB 2324 Jump Street would be constrained by the requirement that any additional Jump Street films involve MGM and original title to some extent. The Jump Street movies have slipped down the list of priorities for Sony Columbia Pictures brass because of this challenging behind-the-scenes issue. There haven't been many reasons to be optimistic about the future of the Jump Street movie series in recent years. While Lord and Miller are still working with Sony on the Spider-Verse sequels, it's unlikely that Universal wants the duo to collaborate with a rival studio on additional films given their lucrative contract with Universal Pictures, which keeps them very busy. Tatum and Hill have resumed leading roles in films, but they also appear more interested in starring in original films like The Lost City and You People than returning to earlier roles. It now seems unlikely that there will ever be another Jump Street sequel due to the difficulties in adapting classic TV shows into current box office successes, such as Baywatch and the upcoming Charlie's Angels film.